Marsh tonight. Daniel Snyder says never in response to the push to change the name of the Washington Redskins. I spoke to Bruce Allen, the general manager of the Washington Redskins. He said this is nothing new. 90% approval rating with Native American Indians. We don't look like this. I'm not a mascot. My children aren't mascots, and, and it's really offensive. My family is actually almost full-blooded Native American, and it would be heartbreaking for us to have the name changed. They're not offended by it at all. Absolutely not. People think it's okay to denigrate Native Americans because it's their tradition. But what about our tradition? But, but, I said they should change their name to the Maryland Redskins, but it was, <laughs> well, didn't go anywhere. Oh, well, before all this controversy started, the only thing I associated our baseball team's name with was pride. Oh, pride and, and history and tradition. And I'll tell you this, I think if you talk to the other Sheboyganites, I think they feel the same way. Well, I mean, I grew up going to the games with my dad, now my son goes to the games with me. It's always been a great family atmosphere, nothing controversial about it. Growing up in Sheboygan, I, I never thought I'd actually get to play for the team. And during my seven years, I never heard from one local resident, you know, saying uh, they were offended by the team name. Well, anybody who was part of the protesters protesting the team name, well, they didn't know nothing about our history. Sheboygan, Wisconsin was struggling at the turn of the 20th century. The city fell deeper into despair with the coming of the Great Depression. As slow as the downturn happened, things turned around remarkably fast when in 1941, Indian Auto Parts, owned by a Jewish family from neighboring Indiana, built a state-of-the-art factory to manufacture vehicles for the army. Suddenly, the people of Sheboygan had two things that they hadn't had in a long time. One was jobs, the other was hope. Stores reopened, local eateries flourished, the town came back to life, and it could all be traced back to the arrival of Indian Auto Parts. Well, now, when my great-grandpappy purchased a minor league baseball team and brought them to Sheboygan, well, he was naturally fixing to name the team after an important part of the town's comeback. The Sheboygan Jews opened their gates in the spring of 1943. Well, we didn't have too many Jewish people living in Sheboygan at the time, but we figured if there were any, well, they would be totally fine with it. I mean, we were honoring them. My dad was a young boy at the time, and his dad took him to see the first game, and he just fell in love immediately. You couldn't deny the connection between the city and the players. We all lived in the town. We went to the same shops as regular people went, you know? We'd go down to the River's Bend Saloon, or, you know, up to the Holiday Gas Station there, and, hey, hey, I met a Jew today. You know, people would go home and tell their wives that. In the early years of the team, there was a lot of losing. It was not good to be a Jew or a Jew fan. Eventually, the team started winning. And a lot of it had to do with their acceptance of minorities during a time when Major League Baseball was still segregated. Suddenly, you had black Jews, Puerto Rican Jews, Dominican Jews, Asian Jews, even the first half Jewish Jew, Jefferson Christianburg. My all-time favorite, without a doubt, had to have been Alejandro Espinosa. If a middle infielder would put his head down for even one second, this guy would steal the base before he even looked up. Sneakiest damn Jew I'd ever seen. When I moved to Sheboygan in 2011, I drove past the ballpark and I saw the name clearly written on a sign and I was like, this, this has to be a mistake. My first thought uh, was to reach out to the other Jewish families in the area, but I quickly found that Jewish families were few and far between in Sheboygan. So I reached out to the team trying to find some answers. Okay, now to be perfectly honest, I could see where Lenny Cohen was confused. Because if you say Jews the wrong way, well yes, I think it could be offensive. But we didn't mean it like, you know, oh, Sheboygan Jews, yuck! <laughs> no, we meant it like Sheboygan Jews. I was willing to hear them out, so when Clyde Boone invited me to the game to get the full Jew experience, I told them that I would go. So I get to the park uh, with my son, and uh, we have an open mind. Everything seemed fine, friendly people, good atmosphere, a kosher environment. And then I started to notice that a few things were askew. The third inning money grab, where 
kids under seven search for pennies in the outfield. It, that, that was quite offensive as well. Well, the third inning money grab, well, that's just good old fashioned fun. The, the mascot, Harvey Jew face, um, was troubling to say the least. Harvey Jew face is offensive? He is a Jew and he has a face. What is so offensive about that? I felt like I needed to reach out to the greater Jewish community and make them aware of what was going on in Sheboygan. I felt like I was the only Sheboyganite who saw how crazy this all was. Omri, uh, firstly, let me wish you and your family a very happy Purim. Uh, can you please explain to the average viewer who might not be familiar with the situation, why do you feel the name should change? Because they're called the Sheboygan Jews. Yeah, if I could just interrupt, I think e that that's Excuse that's me, the, e no, excuse me, excuse uh, me. Your comments are noted. They were clearly not listening to us, so we decided that we needed to be louder. Change the name! Change the name! Get the change the name! Change the name! Change the name! Change the name! Get it! We're doing this! This Lenny Cohane guy comes to Sheboygan, and all of a sudden he wants us not to be called the Jews no more? That's like having a whale jump out of the ocean, land in Hartford, and be like, sorry, now we're called the Hartford French Toasts. Lose the juice! Lose the juice! Screw the juice! It was okay to be a Jew. And then there was a day where all of a sudden, we don't want Jews no more. Suddenly, the change the name movement had all this momentum. And we had to fight back before it was too late, before we were going to lose this battle. Not, neither side was showing signs of backing down. What we're trying to do is find a bunch of people that live in this area who don't want the name of the team to change, you know, like a, a coalition as such. People that, that know what it means to have a team since you were a child. And for all of a sudden that name to change would be just, hey, I'm going around town looking for Jew lovers. We're making a list. We put together a good Save the Jews community that day. Got a lot of names and whatnot, but let me tell you something. We weren't letting no Jew haters come into our town and get rid of our Jews. It is with a heavy heart that today, I announce the sale of the Sheboygan Jews Ball Club. I'm sorry, I'm, 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 no, no, no. The team, the team was not for sale, but with all of the attention, from this name controversy. Uh, well, I was presented with an offer that I could not refuse. Is there any yeah, plan on keeping the mask on? The, the uh, Jews uh, will persevere. This came out of thin air. Just, it just happened. And, and nobody knew what to make of this. Who would do that? Who would take my Jews? Rumors were swirling about this potential rebranding. The name everyone kept mentioning was the Sheboygan Cubans? The fuck is a Cuban? I had to step in. And, you know, if there's one thing I can do is I can market. I know how to build a brand. I know how to connect to people. And so I did the only thing that I needed to do. I renamed it the Cubans. And, and, and let me just be clear, right? A lot of people are confused about the name. It's not just Cubans. It's Cubans with an emoji of me there. Right? That's what I do. I stay ahead of the curve. There's never been a sports team in the history of sports teams that have included an emoji in their name. And of course, I made an emoji of me. I'm just telling you it's brilliant. I can tell you that. Mark Cuban buying the team? He's an outsider just because you got money. Well, I would like to think that some of the Jews I know know how to handle money too. I was furious. I didn't think I'd ever accept a new team. I mean, we were Jews, through and through. You can't just take that away. Sheboygan Cubans owner Mark Cuban today announced that every weekend home game this season will include free beer as well as a complimentary coach bus ride home from the game. I fell in love with the Cubans immediately. I gotta be honest with you. I love being a Jew, but uh, he's great on the Shark Tank, you know? And, and he, he knows what he's doing because I seen Blade Runner and that internet's the future. It was very, very satisfying. Now I could go to the stadium and be proud to root for a team that I actually felt like I was a part of. 
we're all Cubans. That's how I feel. You know, besides the beer, the best thing that Mark Cuban did was that he let us have one night a season that was just to honor the team's history. I was, I was fine with throwback Jew night. It, you know, I, I believe that it wasn't meant to be offensive. It's just, for whatever reason, they didn't know. I, I, maybe they've never met a Jew before, but here I am. I'm not scary, I don't have horns <laughs> or a tail. It was important for me to tell my grandkids, you know, because they're going to grow up with only knowing the Sheboygan Cubans. And I want them to realize that once upon a time, their grandpappy was um, the biggest Jew lover in the country. Maybe even the world.